Hello, it's Metacosis Perfectionalis. Welcome back to my chemistry quick review playlist. In the last video, we talked about chemical reactions and their different types. Today, we shall talk about intramolecular forces versus intermolecular forces. The name has the answer. What does the word intra mean? It means in, inside, inside the molecule. Forces inside the molecule. Okie dokie. How about intermolecular forces? Inter means between. So these are forces between one molecule and the next, not inside the molecule itself. So intramolecular forces, forces inside the molecule. Intermolecular forces, on the other hand, are forces between molecules. And these intermolecular forces include London dispersion forces, dipole-dipole forces, and ion dipole forces. Between intramolecular forces and intermolecular forces, which one is stronger on average? Answer, intramolecular forces are stronger and intermolecular forces are relatively weaker. Okay, here is the second question. Within the intermolecular forces, between London dispersion, dipole-dipole and ion dipole, which one is the strongest? Answer, ion dipole forces. So without further ado, let's get started. Please watch the videos in this chemistry quick review playlist in order and may the force be with you. Let's answer the question of the previous video. Can sodium Na plus and potassium K plus combine together to form a compound? Pause and try to answer this yourself. The answer is absolutely unequivocally no. There is no such thing as a positive ion combining with another positive ion to form a compound. C'est impossible. It's impossible, baby. Let's start by intramolecular forces, then we'll talk about intermolecular forces. Intra means what? Inside. So these are forces inside the molecule. Forces of attraction inside a molecule or a compound that hold the molecule together or hold the compound together. These are stronger than intermolecular forces. What do they involve? The valence electrons. Oh, the electrons in the outermost shell. Absolutely. And these are the electrons that affect chemical reactions, chemical properties. So intramolecular forces mainly affect chemical properties. Intramolecular forces are what? You've heard of them before. Remember ionic bonds, covalent bonds, and metallic bonds? Do you remember in video number 19 in this series when we talked about Visper theory? Why did water have this bent molecular shape? Oh, answer covalent bonds and the presence of these lone pairs which led to angle distortion and reduction in the ideal angle. This was a clear example of intramolecular forces in action. The forces are inside each water molecule. See how strong they are? Yes, they are strong. They bend the freaking water molecule. This slide was discussed in detail in video number 17 in the series. Bonds are ionic, covalent, and metallic. All of these are examples of intramolecular forces. And do you remember Vesper theory and the bent molecular shape? Covalent bonds. There is an ideal angle, but the presence of the lone pairs of electrons led to angle distortion, i.e. a reduction in the ideal angle. And that's why water has an angle of 104.5 instead of the ideal, which is 109.5. This is called the reduction in the angle. Why? Because of the presence of lone pair. The greater the number of lone pairs you have, the greater the reduction in the ideal angle, which means the smaller the end result. This angle is smaller than I expected. And please refer back to video number 19 to learn more. And that was the story of intramolecular forces. Inside the molecule, strong affect chemical properties, include ionic, covalent, and metallic bonds. So the intramolecular forces are ionic, covalent, and metallic bonds. But the intermolecular forces are also three. London dispersion forces, dipole-dipole forces, and ion-dipole forces, which are very strong indeed. Ion-dipole forces are stronger than dipole-dipole, and dipole-dipole forces are stronger than London dispersion forces. 
Let's talk about intermolecular forces. The name has the answer. Inter means between. Molecular. Between molecules. Temporary. Very important. Attraction forces between molecules. Between one molecule and the next molecule. Bringing the molecules together. Hashtag bring them together which sounds like an advertisement. These are also referred to as van der Waals forces. Look what I just said, temporary. Oh, that's why they are weaker than the intramolecular forces. Do they involve valence electrons? No, they do not. And because they do not involve valence electrons, they do not affect chemical properties for the most part. Instead, they do affect physical properties. What do you mean by physical properties? Remember the different physical properties or physical phases or of matter, solid, liquid, and gas? That's what we're talking about. And by the way, the polarity determines the type and the strength of intermolecular forces, as we'll discuss soon. Solids, liquids, and gases, these are physical phases of matter. Look at how neat and organized and tightly bound these solid atoms or solid molecules are which means they have the strongest intermolecular forces. Hashtag bring them together. But look at gases on the other end of the spectrum, weakest intermolecular forces. Next, let's heat the ice. Oh, when you heat, when you add heat, what do you do? You convert the solid into liquid and you convert the liquid into gas. So by adding heat, the atoms and molecules become farther away from one another compared to what we began with. Oh, so adding heat weakens the intermolecular forces. We went from here to here, from strong intermolecular forces to weak intermolecular forces. And now I do not want you to look inside one water molecule. Instead, I want you to look between one molecule and the next molecule. You see here the oxygen has a partial negative charge and the hydrogen has a partial positive charge. Between the partial negative and the partial positive, what do we have? Intermolecular forces between water molecules. In previous videos, we talked about the difference between physical properties and chemical properties. Pause and review. For the most part, intramolecular forces affect chemical properties, whereas intermolecular forces affect physical properties. And we've said before that solids have the strongest intermolecular forces while gases have the weakest intermolecular forces. And that's why solids have higher density than gases. That's why solids have a definite shape, but gases do not. Between water molecules, what do we have? Intermolecular forces. But inside each water molecule, what do we have? Intramolecular forces. Oh, the bent molecular shape? Exactly. So, does water contain intramolecular forces or intermolecular forces? The answer is both. Inside each molecule, there is intramolecular forces. Between molecules, however, we have intermolecular forces. The intramolecular forces are three subtypes, and the intermolecular forces are also three subtypes. Intramolecular forces are the bonds, ionic, covalent, and metallic bonds. The intermolecular forces are London dispersion forces, dipole-dipole, and ion-dipole forces. So let's talk about them. Intermolecular forces include London dispersion forces, or LDF. These are momentarily induced dipoles. Unlike dipole-dipole, which are permanent dipoles, Hey, Metacosis, first let me ask you something. What the flip is a dipole? Di means two, and pole means a pole, like a magnet. It has a north pole and a south pole. Two sides, i.e. positive side and negative side. Oh, got you. If you cut it with a knife, you will get unequal or uneven distribution. One side is more positive, relatively speaking, and the other is more negative, relatively speaking. That's what I mean by a dipole. Two different poles, positive versus negative. So London dispersion just momentarily induced dipoles, not permanent. Why? Because of momentarily, i.e. temporary shift in electrons. And because I said momentarily induced, they are very weak. Where can I find them? In every single stinking type of molecule, whether polar, nonpolar, I don't care, they exist everywhere. And let me tell you something, when it comes to nonpolar substances, which means substances that are not soluble in water, they only have uh, London dispersion forces. 
Nonpolar substances do not have dipole-dipole and they do not have ion dipole. The only thing that non-polar substances possess are London dispersion forces. And these London dispersion forces are weak. So if non-polar substances only have London dispersion forces and London dispersion forces are very weak, this explains why many non-polar substances are gases at room temperature because of the weak intermolecular forces. Aha! Uh -huh. It makes perfect sense. So here is a nonpolar molecule and another nonpolar molecule. They will come close to one another. And when they do, we will have momentarily induced dipoles. For example, this is acting like momentarily induced positive pole and this is a momentarily induced negative pole. Momentarily induced dipoles, which causes attraction between this molecule and this molecule. Attraction forces between molecules are called intermolecular forces. Do you know why we call them London dispersion forces? Oh yeah, because they were discovered in London. Shut up, because they were discovered by London. That's the name of the scientist. Next, let's leave these weak London dispersion forces alone and go to the stronger dipole-dipole forces. Dipole-dipole, polar to polar, caused by uneven distribution of electrons. Electrons are shifted more towards chloride than hydrogen, so chloride becomes partially negative and hydrogen acquires a partial positive charge. This uneven electron distribution will give me partial positive versus partial negative, i.e. it gave me poles, dipole-dipole. Permanent dipoles, not momentarily, not temporarily. They exist between molecules of polar substances with permanent dipoles, like water. Do they exist between nonpolar substances? No, because we just established that nonpolar substances only have London dispersion forces. And since we have positives and negatives, we will have attraction and repulsion. Usually, attraction dominates such as the classic attraction of hydrogen bonds. What the flip is a hydrogen bond? It's a subtype of dipole-dipole intermolecular forces, and basically it means it's between hydrogen and something electronegative, such as between this hydrogen and the electronegative oxygen, because it has a partial negative charge. Partial negative with partial positive, they will attract one another, and that's a dipole-dipole. That's why water is polar by definition. Next, let's talk about ion dipole. Not between polar and polar, it's between an ion and a polar substance. These are very strong, way stronger than dipole-dipole. Why is that, Medicosis? Let me tell you. Because the ion will be fully charged, not partially charged. Ah, I got you. Here I had partial negative and partial positive, and that's why they were relatively weaker than ion dipole. In ion dipole, I have fully charged sodium ion. It's positively charged, or I can have a fully charged negative chlorine ion. Whether it's a positive ion or negative ion, I don't care because it's fully charged either way. So between the sodium and the water, I have ion dipole forces, which are very strong. Also between chloride and water, I have ion dipole. So ion dipole forces exist between a fully charged ion, whether positive or negative, and a polar molecule. Do you remember this lovely intermolecular forces? This is a classic example of dipole-dipole intermolecular forces. Partial negative, partial positive. Why is that? Because oxygen is more electronegative than the hydrogen. If you want to learn more about electronegativity, please refer to my video titled Periodic Trends. Let me see if you remember. What is the most electronegative atom? Drop your answer in the comments. Question, why is sodium chloride, i.e. salt, soluble in water? Easy, because we have multiple ion dipole forces between the positive sodium and water molecules. Ion, dipole, ion, and polar. And also we have multiple ion dipole forces between the negative chlorine, ion, and polar water molecules. So these water molecules will attract the sodium on one side, and these water molecules will attract the chlorine on one side. You separated the salt, i.e. you dissolved the salt in the water. 
That's why NaCl is water soluble. Thank you so much, ion dipole forces. So in this video, we talked about the three intramolecular forces and the three intermolecular forces. On average, intramolecular forces are stronger than intermolecular forces. And within the intermolecular forces, the strongest of which is ion dipole. Question of the day, is carbon dioxide polar or not? Let me know your answer in the comments. You'll find the answer key in the next video in this glorious chemistry quick review playlist. If you want to download these chemistry notes and my biology notes and my biochemistry notes, go to metacosisperfectionalist.com. There are more than 1,500 free videos on this channel, plus 300 premium videos when you click the join button and choose the highest tier. Smash like, subscribe, hit the bell, support my channel on Patreon or PayPal, or you can Venmo me. Go to metacosisperfectionalist.com to download my notes notes, courses, cases, or if you'd like me to personally tutor you. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine and chemistry make perfect sense.